This is the fourth video of our SQLite series in Android. In this video, what we're going to do is put together the fetch plants method that is going to fetch plants by a given search term. We can borrow some of the fetch by global unique identifier logic that we uh, copied in our that we created in our last video, in our video number three. For example, uh, what I can do, let's say this, these columns are things I want to select frequently. Um, what I can do is I can highlight these columns, and let's see if we have any options here that might help. Uh, refactor, extract, local variable, let's try that. Okay, variable name, we'll call this columns. Okay, and okay. Okay. So you see, now we're saying, okay, let me disconnect from the debugger, select columns from plant, ta plant table where do it equals uh, whatever the ID is. So uh, we've externalized these columns so that we can use them over and over again. I might refactor this one more time. Uh, let's see what we have under quick fix. Uh, convert local variable to field. That'll work. That way I can use this column statement across multiple... Uh, oh, shoot, you know what? Let me just move it up manually. That way I can use this column statement across multiple methods. So, uh, private string columns equals GUID plus genus plus species plus cultivar plus common. That'll work. Okay, now I'm going to take this selection clause that I put together and fetch by a global unique identifier, and I'm going to paste it down and fetch plants. So with fetch plants, we're actually returning a collection of plants and we're not comparing to one unique identifier. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this is a common name. So we're going to say where common. And then instead of equals, we're going to say like. In SQL, what we can do is we can use a like quote clause and then start with a single quote and a paren and then have our search term. So we'll say search param and then terminate with a single quote, with a, uh, sorry, with a paren or a percent symbol and a single quote. What that will do is that will search the column called common and it will return results where that column, any part of that column contains the search parameter. So we don't have to type all of Redbud, uh, maybe Eastern Redbud. We wouldn't have to turn, we, we wouldn't have to type the entire word Eastern Redbud. Instead, we can just search based on uh, the word red, and it will find any, any row where common contains the word red. It doesn't have to be an exact match. It just has to contain. Okay? Now, there's more that we can borrow. Uh, we can run this query like this. Uh, or, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and run this query. So, I'm going to borrow this, uh, uh, get the results in the cursor. We'll borrow this statement here. Okay. Boom, cursor, cursor equals get readable database, and we're simply running the same query. The only difference is here that we are actually going to search for multiple records instead of just one. In the fetch by global unique identifier, we know we get exactly one record. In this method, um, we, will, we might get multiple records because we're doing a fuzzy match. We're saying, give me any plant that contains the name red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, first of all, let's make sure we have results. And I'm going to say if cursor.getCount, remember we talked about that method in our last lesson. Uh, that shows us how many results we have. If cursor get count is greater than zero, uh, then we're going to say move to the first result. And we'll say cursor dot move to first. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to say iterate over this result set as long as we have not passed the end. A lot of the stuff I'm putting in now looks kind of goofy, but it's just a standard way that we handle uh, that we handle cursors, that we handle iterating over a large result set. So I'm going to say while, then exclamation is the negation operator. It takes what's true and converts it to false. 
take what's false and convert it to true. While not, cursor is after last. And what that means is we're going to continue to iterate until the cursor goes beyond the last result. Okay. Um, now what I can do is I can grab this logic here that we have from before. Okay. And paste in here. There we go. Create a new plant object. Say plant plant equals new plant. Okay. Populate the plant object just like we did before. And then we'll say add this plant to a collection. Okay. We need to define that collection. So the collection will be an array list of plants. So we'll say uh, define the return value array list. All, uh, let me put in the generic identifier plant, all plants equals new array list plant. Okay, and then the constructor, and then we will return all plants, like so. Okay, I think we're good. And now add this plant to a collection, all plants dot add uh, plant. Okay. I went through that a little bit quickly. Let me put some comments. Let me uh, put in some comments, and uh, then I will describe exactly what's going on. I also want to close the cursor. We're all finished with... I misspelled that one, didn't I? Finished with the cursor, so we can close it. Okay, cursor.close. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to save. And we have, uh, okay, we have a method that takes a search term and returns a collection of plants. Okay, the method is called fetch plants. Now, we're declaring what we're going to return, which is all plants. We are, we are also defining a selection statement, a SQL selection statement. And we're running that SQL selection statement. Okay. Now, uh, if we get results, we're going to move to the first result, and we're going to iterate until we get to the end. Every time we iterate, we're going to create a new plant object, and we're going to populate that plant object. Then we're going to take that populated plant object, and we're going to add that to the collection of plant objects. Now, here's what's interesting. If we don't have any results, the area in blue will not execute, and all plants will return as an empty list. But if we do have results, all plants will return as a populated list. Okay, so I'm going to put a breakpoint on, line 113, and I'm going to look very closely at this and just make sure everything looks good, which I believe it is. So we've borrowed a little bit, we've copied and pasted. Uh, count is greater than zero, move to first, well, is after last, populate and close. And I'm going to save. I'm going to take one more check at my where statement. And we remember, remember we're saying where the common is like. And then we're passing in a search parameter. And by using these wildcard characters, we're saying that the column named common only needs to contain, uh, only needs to partially, needs to contain that search term. In other words, let me try it out. It's probably a lot easier to show than to try to explain. If we take a look at the plants table, We'll see common, we have Eastern Red Bud, Appalachian Red Red Bud, Lavender Twist Red Bud. Each of these has the word red in it. Okay, each of these has the word red in it. So by using that like clause, we're saying it just has to contain the word red. It doesn't have to exactly match the word red. Um, in other words, if we did exact match, we'd have to type all of Eastern Red Bud. If we do a contains with the word red, it'll return Eastern Red Bud. Let's try it out. First, let's try it like this, where common equals red. Let's try it where the common has to be an exact match. And when we execute, we're going to find we get no results. Now let's change that from equals to like. And let's put the wild cards on. Let's just put the wild card on the front of red and choose execute query. And again, no results. Let's try the wild card on the end of red execute query and we see that now we only get results that begin with the word red because we're saying red and then wildcard any number of characters can follow that red 
and you see that all the results start with red. Now if I put the wildcard on either side of red and execute query, we're going to see that we get results where red is anywhere in that uh, column. Okay, so uh, where we put the wildcard says starts with or ends with or contains. So think about where you want to put that wildcard on the beginning, on the end, or on both. And this is the result we expect uh, if we put it on both sides. We're saying it just has to contain the word red. Okay, I think we're in good shape. As long as my syntax is good, I think we're in good shape. I'm going to save this. Now, how are we going to run this? And this is interesting. I'm going to right-click this method, and I'm going to say open call hierarchy. Let's see what this method is called. This method is called in our plant results, but only only when we're offline, which is really interesting. This is only going to run when we're offline and the user won't even notice the difference. So I'm going to do a little trick here. Uh, I'm on my laptop right now. It's not plugged into the internet. I'm going to turn off wireless. Uh, first, I'll go ahead and deploy this. Uh, let's see, I think I'll need to redeploy, so just a moment. Once it's deployed, I'm going to turn off wireless. And the whole point of this exercise is to show that we can use a combination of SQLite and proper exception handling to provide the user with a seamless experience whether the user is online or offline. That's a good use of SQLite and exception. So we'll let this go ahead and install while we're online, uh, and then I'm going to turn off my network. Okay, I'll let this go ahead and install. We'll give it a moment. Okay, and it's coming up. Okay, and now it's up. And I'm going to switch off my wireless. Okay, got that taken care of. Might have... and so wireless is off, I can tell, because I am not getting any uh, instant messenger activity here. I'm going to hit search plants, and we're going to see when not connected to the network, we're going to watch what happens. Okay, and now I'm going to search for red. We'll just put in the letters R-E-D and hit search. And we want to watch very carefully what happens when I choose search. So I choose search, and the debugger should pick up now. Okay, crossing fingers. Looks like the, brother, the uh, debugger is kicked. Okay, and uh, let's see. We don't need to worry about this one. I'm going to disable this breakpoint and continue. This is what I like about the debugger is it gives us an opportunity to... Uh, look at what's actually going to happen. So, um, okay, I'm going to step through one line at a time, and this is the plant results screen. This is when it's going to try to go online and fetch the data. But what's funny is it's not going to be able to go online because I've turned off my network access. I have no network access right now as I'm recording. Good thing this isn't a live class. Good thing it's a recorded class. That's one benefit. So I'm going to choose F6, and what we're going to see is it's going to throw an exception because it cannot connect to the network. And when it throws an exception, uh, it's going to come down here to this catch block. So F6, if not handled properly, an exception will result in crashing the program. But if handled properly, we can use the exception as a way to look for a workaround uh, that we can temporarily use. So I F6 and let's let it go. Okay, and it took a moment, but we did get here to this catch block. Now I'm going to choose F6. And what we should see is sure enough, it picks up here at the offline plan TAO. So you see what happened? It tried to make the network call. Let me slide this back over where we can see it. It tried to make the network call. That network call failed because I'm disconnected from the network. I'm not on an Ethernet. I've turned off my wireless on this computer. Um, because of that, it skips from line 106 to line 109. It completely skips over line 107 and 108. It goes to the catch block, and now it's going to run the same query 
but it's going to run it against the local copy of the database. So we see it's going to go through and create the select statement. Okay, and let me copy the select statement from the debugger window here. I'll copy that and I'm going to paste it into uh, I'm going to paste it into the uh, SQLite data browser and let's see what we get. Okay, uh, we get the expected results. We get anything with a common name that contains red, but we're getting it from our local database. Uh, we're not going to get it from the network. So, okay, run the query. Make sure the query gives us results. We do have a result. Move to the first result. And now we're going to iterate over each of these plants, over each of these results, and we're going to populate plants. But again, because I'm not connected to the network, I'm now running with local data. So we can go through here, and it's going to you know, go through about 70 or so plants. I'll go ahead and choose play. And what that will do is that's going to populate the list of plants, and then it's going to return that populated list uh, back to our UI, and we'll have our plant results from there. And so we see that we can use this online offline toggle, and I'm going to go ahead and turn my wireless back on. And we can use this online offline toggle, or we can use exceptions in SQLite to give the user a seamless experience, uh, whether the user is connected to the network or not. Now, while we're using our mobile phones, they are called mobile phones for a reason because they are mobile. And so this is one of the big benefits of using a mobile phone. Um, uh, but there are times when we want to go to online data, or local data rather, uh, even if we are connected to the network. And that's a case where uh, we'll want to do something like a, uh, an autocomplete. So we can do another query. Uh, let me control M. And I'm, uh, we're going to call this one a select distinct. But you know what? I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do that in a different video. We'll make a fifth video out of that. So for this video, we'll go ahead and end it here. What we saw is that we could make a uh, query off of local data, and we can return multiple results, um, if, and then we can toggle our network on and off so that we can uh, populate and continue to use our application while we're offline. So things we learned in this lecture were the like statement. We have like with single quote and the wildcard and then wildcard and single quote. And we also took a look at uh, the cursor, how we can see if we have more than zero rows, move to the first row, and then continue to iterate until we've reached the last row. And then we can return all of this um, as a collection of plant objects back to the UI. So we'll leave it there for this, and then we'll go to a fifth video where we will take a look at using the SQL distinct clause to populate autocomplete. Thank you.